Ah, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today's one of those days where um, I wasn't really expecting on making this video, but here I am because I just realized that this is actually some pretty cool stuff that you guys have either maybe never seen before or, you know, maybe you didn't know this stuff existed. Either way, last week, me and my family, we lost electricity for half the week. And in, in doing so, you know, I, I'm a firm follower behind the never let a situation get ahead of you and never um, abuse a situation to the point where you can't turn it into an opportunity. And that is definitely what I did. So guys, um, when I didn't have electricity and we were all sitting around with nothing much to do, I whipped out the electronics kits from... 1999 it was brand new in the box you guys if you see my video where i went through the cool electronic store i believe it was video number three where i'm touring the store i seen some of these electronics kits and i pulled it out because it is the perfect opportunity to sit there and explain electricity to my kids so my wife and my kids i had them all sit down and we assembled this kit because this kit comes in parts all tiny little parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around. We'll show you what the kit consisted of and how I improved on some of the existing designs so that it's much more useful. All right, let's do this. All right, how about that? There we go. All right guys, so um, this is the kit. So it consists of a bell it's got a motor that you build from scratch, which means each and every one of your uh, slats in the motor, each single one of the stamp pieces of steel, you have to line them up and then you have to wind each and every one of the coils independently. <laughs> it was a little bit of a project and I'll admit I messed up initially uh, because I didn't have one of my plastic guards on and so while I'm sitting there and I'm winding, I had to unwind one of my coils, which kind of sucked, but it's okay. So once the rotor is completely built, then you know the rest of it goes together quite smoothly. But we also have a generator, how cool is that? And uh, we also have a battery bank slash meter. And one of the cool things about the battery bank is that they have a dual cell, which turns the output to three volts or you have two uh, AA batteries, so that means you have 1.5 volts each. And, um, you know, that way there you can modify some of your wiring paths and stuff to actually decrease and increase speed on certain components. We'll go through that in just a moment. So, guys, this is the kit. Looks pretty cool. And it actually, you can see step by step of how you build it from scratch, it, from coils of magnet wire on up and you assemble it, it's actually super cool. And uh, these here, using all three of these, I can actually tell people about AC and DC electronics, believe it or not, because uh, the bell technically kind of operates on like an AC because of its switching, but uh, mainly DC, all right? You can see there's the bell and how you assemble it. So if you can imagine, you, here's the rotor and every one of the laminations, and you have to line them all up and everything. They're all independent, but they come in a pile, and you just you have to line them all up. It's, it's a fascinating kit. So here's uh, three of the coils of enamel insulated wire. It shows you how you have to wind them. And I did, one by one. <laughs> Took a while. And uh, you also build your commutator. That, that was actually pretty cool. So it was an amazing opportunity for me and my kids uh, to sit here and explain, like right here, on motor theory. And they're talking about polarity and how when it touches the commutator, it activates certain coils and certain coils are um, not activated. And then when it rotates, it changes the polarity so that one magnet becomes a pull and it then becomes a push. So it's, it's really interesting. And we were able to also simulate this with permanent magnets on a table. 
you know, by flipping the magnet back and forth, you can actually make another one spin. Same thing in concept. So here's an electric generator. It's a pretty cool book. And this kit, I believe I bought it for what, 20 bucks, something like that. Let's say $30 at that electronic store. I don't really remember, but, uh, if you could find this on eBay or something, I say go for it, man. What a perfect kit. So anyway, I did have a bunch of extra parts. There's even things like this LED, which is not the most efficient LED uh, because it requires quite a bit of voltage in order to activate it. And, um, you know, we get some extra wire. So anyway, let's go through each and every one of these one by one. And uh, let's start out with the bell, okay? So the bell, it's got a little spring-a-ding arm and you can see how the coil comes up and it attaches right here. This is adjusting the preload on the spring-a-ding spring arm. <laughs> and um, also right here is another one of the coils. So it goes from the springs right here and one of them comes up here. Whoop. Boy, that's really blowing it out. Hold on. I hope that's better, guys. Okay, so one of the coils from the spring comes up here. The other spring comes down here, goes through this guy, and then it comes up to here. All right? And, uh, and then it completes the circuit. So what it does is it vibrates off the bell, and using the spring action between there and there, it you know, I, I guess you find that sweet spot between attraction and repulsion and it, this little spring right here overrides it and it gives it that bounce back action. So it's just enough. Um, technically it kind of operates like an AC wave in theory. Um, but anyway, you assemble it from scratch on the bottom side, you can see the magnet wire and you can see some of the modifications that I did because magnet wire, it, it's copper, it work hardens. So you can see the springs, I hot glued them in so that they are not gonna move um, because kids are rough, you know, and I want kids to be able to play with this. It's a, it's a toy, but it's also a, a piece of technology to learn from. So the wires, the magnet wires are secured down with hot glue as well. And instead of just wrapping around the posts, you can see that I actually soldered the wire to the posts. That way there, you eliminate uh, future faults, which are guaranteed to happen. So that's the bell. We'll, we'll power it up in just a moment. All right, let's see. The next one that we built is the generator. So the generator actually consists of an electric motor, which is down here. You can see it right there. And the wires stick down through the bottom and they come up to here. And you have to build this uh, transmission through here it comes in pieces. Every single gear and everything comes in pieces. You have to lubricate them, you have to find their home position, and then you have to adjust the gear lash, which is done through uh, some adjustment collars, brass adjustment collars with set screws. And once you adjust all the gear lash and everything and you line it up, it's properly lubricated, it does generate a reasonable amount of electricity. All right, so it is a gear reduction between the motor to the handle. That way there, uh, as you spin the handle, you get, uh, I, I probably should do the calculation sometime. It's probably like 100 to one. It's, it's extremely high ratio. But uh, the wires are also hot glued to the springs. And I put shrink tube on these wires right here. And this is dual layer marine grade shrink tube. So it also gives it some uh, strain relief and some strength. I did find at when the, I was assembling this kit that there were several components that were pre-wired, but the wires were either weak or they were breaking and the electric motor was one of them. So I had to resolder the wires just to make sure that they're stronger and that the integrity of every single conductor is connected to the tab. Then I put the heat shrink tube on and then I bent them over, they were hot glued. So now the springs and everything are properly retained. You can hook and unhook it as many times you want. You don't have to worry about mechanical failures. Um, so the, there's a little bit of a protrusion on the side. You can kind of see it there so it doesn't really sit flat to the ground. I can fix that by heating this up yet again and then bending it over and then holding it while it cools down. Would have worked perfectly. 
eh, but I just didn't care. We didn't have electricity at the time, like I said. So uh, my hot air station and stuff, when I built this, were not completely working. So you're probably wondering, if you didn't have electricity, how did you solder and how did you got the hot air station? Well, it's because I am a firm believer in some of these Milwaukee tools. You see, I have a hot air gun here, battery powered, and I have a soldering iron here, battery powered. That's how I did it. Pretty easy, guys. And of course, I always keep my batteries charged and ready to rock and roll. You never know what's gonna happen. So, there's the generator. That's the second component. And I do not have the handle tightened down. It's kind of driving me crazy at the moment. Let's go ahead and do that right now. There we go. <laughs> so the handle is just flippy flopping around. Just use a nut driver, tighten it down. We are good to go. That's my electric generator. We'll stick it off to the side. Next would be that motor that I talked about. So I just did my final adjustment just moments ago because uh, these metal pieces right here were not at a perfect 90 degree. So if they're canted in a little bit, the opening was also at an angle. And if it's at an angle, it's going to ride irregularly on the shaft, which is also gonna create some binding and some extra stress. So if it's at a perfect 90 degrees to the perforation through the, the stamped steel, you're going to uh, have much smoother magnet. And you can see it's, it's rotating quite well. So I just had to adjust the lash between these two points, which are the only thing that's keeping the rotor centered. So the rotor is a rotational part of a, um, of an electromagnetic motor. And right here we have the stator, which is the stationary part, which right here we have permanent magnets. So you can see north and south pole. And uh, oddly enough, they also painted the magnets to tell you what's north and south pole, which is kind of cool. There's a couple uh, accessories that can go on this. You can see the color wheel here. And that's the one I'm leaving on it because it's the easiest one to show people that there's movement. You see that? And if you spin it fast enough, the colors blend in and they turn into another color if it's spinning fast enough. Optical illusion. This one here, you can see, I also went through and I glued down all the magnet wire and I resecured the points down here. I do believe when I soldered these points right here, it, it loosened up the plastic. So you can see that I had to shoot some hot glue over those uh, fasteners so that they wouldn't come loose. And um, also because this is an old, like 20 some year old toy, right here on the edges, the cardboard was maybe due to humidity or whatnot. You can see it a little bit right here. It wasn't sitting exactly flush. So what I had to do is I put weight on it and I held it down and then I hot glued it so that it would hold it and keep it from um, extending itself. Because anything that's a little bit proud of the surface, it's going to get damaged. And I, I want it to, to last. You know, This is something that I'll probably donate to a school or something in the future. So that's the motor. Hand wound, every single one of the laminations was put in place by me. And um, you know, I adjusted the commutator and uh, you know, the brushes right here, which are just um, pieces of brass. You see them? I had to adjust all that by hand. There you go. So that's the electric motor and the power meter. Now the power meter, it uh, did have a broken connection right here at a resistor. So they put a load resistor in here because a meter is just a coil. And if you don't limit the amount of current that goes into it, it will just fricking fry the coil on the other side. It will become the resistor. So there is a resistor that's here and it was broken. I had to resolder that. You can see how I put hot glue there. I put hot glue here all in around the, um, the readout display, the, the springs, they're uh, fastened down. All the wires and everything, they're all hot glued down properly so that they can't move and all the springs. On the top side, we have a uh, contactor switch. It's a momentary switch. And I've got coils for the positive of uh, 1.5 volts, 
a center point, center tap, which is the center point between the two batteries. And then I have uh, the negative terminal for the end of the other battery, which technically turns this into either a three volt configuration or 1.5 volt. So we, I could have two 1.5 volt things run at the same time, or I can turn up the juice and be dangerous and run at three volts total. You can see right here are the spring loaded terminals for the indicated uh, momentary switch. So we can wire that up. And up here are the meter connection points. And I have two Duracell batteries in here. They will not stay in there. I do not trust Duracell batteries anymore because they leak. So uh, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and let's set it up. Let's show you guys how it runs. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a switched three volt configuration. So I'm gonna run from one side of my terminal on my switch to, let's see, my negative terminal on my battery. And let's do the bell first. That's kind of a cool one. Okay, so here's my bell. I'm gonna run from one terminal to my switch. And I'm gonna run from my three volt output. There we go. Over to the other terminal right here on the bell. So in theory, when I press the button, it should start ringing. I can adjust the lash on the spring arm here to the point where it's completely locked up, or I can loosen it up to the point where it doesn't spring back. Remember I was telling you about that AC uh, because it's connecting and disconnecting. It needs that, that preload on that spring in order to create that connect and deconnect. So that's what we're doing here. You can increase the frequency of impacts on the bell or decrease it for a uh, more pleasing acoustic sound on the bell. So my kids love the bell, of course. Anything that, that irritates the parents, the kids love. And that's just the nature of it. And if I were to run this on 1.5 volts, which I'll do for you guys, it's really weird. There's like some sort of capacitance and then it staves off. Ready? See? It vibrates for a second and then it staves off. So when I hook it back to three volt, and then I will hook it back to the 1.5 volt. You'll see it, it move and then it stops and then there's no more movement because there's not enough energy there to create a magnetic field on this coil to draw in the spring arm here. So I don't know where the capacitance is hold, held up um, because maybe it's, it's too much pull on the battery. I, maybe it's not capacitance at all. Um, maybe it just, you know, the battery just gives its most and then it stops. Those are brand new batteries, by the way. So anyway, that is the bell. And the bell should be uh, bi-directional, which means the polarity doesn't matter. Should be. I, I haven't necessarily found that to be true, but it uh, should be. Let's see. I will go ahead and connect. Let's connect up this LED. Let's see if we got the correct polarity. We do. That's, that's a 50-50 shot. I didn't even look to see what wires connected to what terminal. Okay, and like any LED, if you reverse the polarity of your connections, it will not work. It's a diode. So it's a cool test. It's a good demonstration for the kids. All right, next is going to be the motor, the electric motor. We're going to run it in both the three volt and 1.5 volt configuration. So here we go, three volts. Pretty cool, huh? Notice how all the colors blend together and they form white. Red, green, blue. Runs pretty good. <laughs> all right, so that's a three volt configuration. Let's, let's tune it down. You, we're using only one of the battery cells now, 
1.5 volt configuration. Theoretically, it should be about half the speed. I suppose with this disc, we could test that with a, a tachometer. But uh, theoretically, it's half of uh, the speed. So anyway, there's that guy. And uh, it works quite well. There's also a propeller, which is slotted. And I, I suppose it's supposed to spin fast enough that it will fly off. I don't know. Let's see if we can get it to fly off. It just loosely fits on there, okay? And let's see, polarity does matter because we don't want to have reverse polarity and have the propeller forcing itself down on the shaft. Yeah, so that's reverse polarity right there. Here, let's run it at three volts. Come on. There we go. Okay, you can see it's just got a tang that the, the propeller sits on. So right now, the fan is actually blowing upwards. So it's forcing itself down on the shaft. So if we reverse the polarity, which means we reverse the wires, so the positive is now on this side, negative is on that side. Now it should spin the correct direction, which should be clockwise. See that? and the propeller should want to take off. I don't know. Hmm. Not quite enough juice. I wonder, I have a DC power supply over there, if I can make it take off if I spin, I don't know, let's say eight, nine volts. The weak point in this configuration is always gonna be right here, the brass commutator, okay? These brass brushes, they're gonna be the weak point, all right? So eventually they are going to deplete themselves or they're gonna get contaminated and it will not spin as fast. Oh, it does wanna take off. Yep, look at that. It does, it does wanna booger off on its own. It's, a, it's an okay demonstration uh, to show people that direction does matter. But uh, I like the color wheel myself. <laughs> I love motors, guys. Can't help it. Okay, so there's that guy. Next, a extremely cool demonstration is the fact that we can use the generator as a motor. So, uh, mind you, because of the gear reduction, you have to make sure that this handle isn't gonna hit anything because A, it could potentially hurt because the gear reduction, and B, you don't want it to break the plastic transmission, all right? So, if everything's free and clear, <laughs> that motor that generates electricity, when the electricity is reversed, it becomes a motor. So let's go ahead and let's show you one more cool thing. We'll take that generator and let's hook it up over here to my meter. And you can see the meter doing its thing. Now the meter is is probably going to be polarity sensitive. Oh, you can see it taking off right there. Yeah. So you can actually gauge how much electricity you're running. Um, here's the thing is because of that uh, current limiting resistor, you cannot put the meter in series with something like the motor. It will not work uh, because the resistor is going to limit too much current. So you're going to have to put it, the meter in parallel with the motor. All right, so that means that I would connect something to these terminals and then these terminals here would also connect over here. All right, here we go. I like spring-loaded terminals of like the 1990s electronics kits. It makes it so easy to test your own configurations and it's definitely easy for the kids. So here we go. We have the, the permanent magnet motor connected and we have the power meter over here. You can clearly see it spinning. So if it's in parallel, it'll work. But if I put it in series, so like from here and then this terminal here over to here and this one back to the generator, it, it will not work. It's too, too much current limiting.
I can get it spinning pretty good. So there you go. And um, I don't know if I can generate enough electricity to do the bell. That's a challenge. Because the bell is just power hungry in order to create that field on that coil. Let's see if we can do it. You can see it want to. Let's go ahead and reverse those wires just in case it's polarity sensitive. Here we go. So there's nothing to build up and keep a constant charge. It needs constant charge because it, it's, it develops like a harmonic and it uses that pre, uh, the preload on that spring. So because I can't crank at a constant level, you're always going to have that problem. Now what I could do is inline put a capacitor and it will start ringing. It needs a very constant charge in order to develop a harmonic because if I'm increasing and in, in decreasing the resistance or uh, decreasing the amount of voltage because I'm spinning it faster and slower, um, then what's going to happen is it's not going to develop a harmonic. It's going to be like, oh, I need to speed up. Oh, I need to slow down. And that's why you can see it vibrate a little bit there. And then it stops. See how it just never develops that harmonic to actually uh, articulate and ring that bell. So anyway, guys, that, that is it. That is my electronics kit. And that's how I spent my time with the kids uh, for the period of time that we didn't have electricity. We learned about electricity with these electronics kits. And I do have another one of these kits uh, inside and it has way more features than this. So maybe I will unpack that and do that one live on, on the camera because it's so cool. I love these kits, man. So this one here is Electronic Lab by Maxitronics and it's, it's the action kit. And who's to say what kind of stuff that you can develop with this? It also comes with a, another separate battery compartment right here. And I didn't utilize this one. There's no need to because this guy here has got it built in with the switch. I mean, come on, you gotta have the switch, right? So this guy's cool, but you can see I also fixed it also with the dual grade marine shrink tube to rigid, make it more rigid. I might actually save this for another kit. You never know. Some of these extra parts are pretty cool. It's got a lot of extra wires and some extra fasteners and stuff. Cool stuff. Comes with these little tubes right like this and this is going to be grease so that I can either grease my transmission and or the motor right here and right here for uh, where it meets <laughs> the rigid stainless steel. So anyway guys that is it and uh, that is my journey through the action kit and uh, I hope that you guys appreciate these little walks down memory lane with electronics because I absolutely love this kind of stuff and this is where I first developed my passion way back in the day, way before Biomed when I was fixing electronics. It was because of stuff like this. So whoever developed this stuff, I commend you. This is some amazing tech to help teach kids. Thanks for watching, guys.